Diving in today, who's Sean Combs? He was born November 4th, 1969. He is 54 years old. I don't know anything about him. If returning subscribers, y'all know I'm a musician. I've got a lot of videos of me playing or b playing to backtracks, or I've got I was in a band, things like that, ranging from like 1989 to you know to 14 years ago. I haven't been doing much since then because life gets in the way. Surrounding all the controversy of Combs, it's it's pretty bad. It's it's looking pretty bad, all the allegations that's against him. But I wanted to know who is this guy? Who is he? How is raised to fame? How what's his net worth? All of this good stuff. All of this good stuff. So I was interested in who is this guy. I I've never even heard I don't even think I've heard one of his songs. Maybe I have, I don't know, and just didn't know it was him. I have no clue. I haven't even researched that yet. Do I know one of his songs? I, I have no idea. But let's get into this. Uh, Sean John Combs is his name, born November 4th, 1969, also known by his stage names as Diddy, Puff Daddy, Puffy, and P. Diddy. He's an American rapper record producer and record executive, a three-time Grammy Award winner. He is credited with the discovery and development of musical artists, including the notorious Big, Mary J. Blige, and Usher. In September 2024, he was arrested on charges of racketeering, sex trafficking by force, and transportation for purpose of prostitution. It is bad. It is bad, and they are holding him, which it's, it's the big news that's trending. He was born in Harlem and raised in Mount Vernon, New York. Combs worked as a talent director in Uptown Records before founding his own record label, Bad Boy Records, in 1993. He embarked on his recording career following the success of his first uh, single, The Notorious... Or, I'm sorry, success of his first signing, The Notorious Big, for whom he served as manager and hype man. Combs' debut studio album, No Way Out, uh, 1997, received critical acclaim, peaked atop the Billboard 200, and received uh, platinum certification from the recording industry. Two singles from the album, Can't Nobody Hold Me Down. Well, you think he's singing that right now. And I'll be missing you. Yeah, he's missing somebody. He's sitting in jail. Top the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. The latter was the first hip-hop song to debut atop a chart. His second album and third albums, Forever, 1999, and the saga continues in 2001. Both peaked at number two on the Billboard's 200. While his fourth, Press Play, in 2006, peaked atop the chart, Combs then formed the musical group Diddy, Dirty Money, with R&B singers Kalania Harper, i sorry if I butchered her name, and Don Richard, to release the collaboration album, the collaborative album, I can't even talk this morning, Last Train to Paris in 2010, which peaked at number seven and was supported by the single Coming Home. His fifth studio album, The Love Album, Off the Grid in 2023, received moderate critical and commercial response. So I guess he's just like all musicians. I mean, over time, it, things start dying out. He probably has to look to produce and promote other people because young people want to see young people. That's it, people. <laughs> he has worked as a producer for other media, including MTV's reality series, Making the Band. He launched the clothing retail Sean John in 1998, in which he won Menswear Designer of the Year from the Council of Fashion Designers of America in 2004. 
Having previously been nominated in 2000, Combs served as a brand ambassador for the liquid brand, the liquor brand, uh, Sinrock, I guess that's how you say it, from 2007 to 2023, and co-founded the television network Revolt in 2013. He is one of the wealthiest musical artists. In late 2023, his former partner, Cassie Venter, filed a multi-million dollar sexual assault lawsuit against him, and they settled out of court. Over the next few months, numerous civil complaints were filed by com uh, complainants who alleged that they had been sexually abused by Combs between 91 and 2009, and many more are in the planning stages as of October 2024. In March 2024, several properties tied to Combs were, were raided by the Department of Homeland Security as part of their investigation. In May 2024, surveillance footage of Combs physically assaulting uh, Ventura at a hotel was released. Combs issued a public apology for the assault. I'm so sorry I kicked you and punched you and all of this mess. Oh, man. that's Well, we know we can't get away with that, but the rest are allegations. In September 2024, he was indicted by the federal grand jury in Manhattan and charged with sex trafficking, racketeering, and the creation of a criminal enterprise in which he abused, threatened, coerced women and others around him to fulfill his sexual desires. Wow. Protect his reputation and conceal his conduct. He pled not guilty twice and he was twice denied bail. Combs is awaiting trial in federal custody in the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn. This is really bad for him. I mean, everybody's talking about it. Hearing me a little pee on, I don't know nothing about this guy. I, You know, so I was curious to see what's going on with this. And plus, it's probably going to... This makes it to trial. Now, I saw something earlier today that uh, a couple of them have settled. So, if you settled with them, I'm just speculating here that there was some lividity to their allegations. Now, whether he gave them a couple million and hopefully that'll make the pain go away, I don't know, but... Guys, I, I think, uh, I, don't, I don't even know how I would feel in that situation, or I can't speak to any of the victims. <laughs> but you would think if you're looking down on it, you're like, if this guy is doing all of this stuff for all of these years, the youngest being nine, he needs to be put away. He needs to be put away forever. This is uh, his earlier life. Uh, Sean John Combs was born on November 4th, 1969 in Harlem, which we just talked about that. He was raised in New York. His mother, Janice Combs, uh, was a model and uh, teacher's assistant. And his father, Melvin Earl Combs, served in the U.S. Air Force and was associated of convicted New York. He, what? He was associated of convicted New York drug dealer Frank Lucas, whatever that is. Now, that was a tongue twister. At age 33, Melvin was shot dead while sitting in his car on Central Park West when Combs was two years old. Combs has a sister and grew up in poverty. Wow. I didn't even know that. His father was killed. Associate of convicted New York drug dealer he was an associate. Uh, well, wow. I don't know. I seen some video footage of him and his mother, and it was bizarre behavior with them. I think they were getting those. They party so much. They get those bags of uh, intravenous stuff, and him and his mom were doing it together, and they were kissing each other on the lips. It was creepy. Yeah, it was creepy. Combs was raised Catholic and served as an altar boy. He graduated from Mount St. Michael Academy and an all-boys Catholic school in 1987. Well, if he was raised in poverty, how the hell did he get to go to a Catholic school? 
Just saying. Just asking questions here, people. He played football for the Academy, and his team won a division title in 1986. Combs said he was given the nickname Puff as a, as a child because he would huff and puff when he was angry. Combs was a business major at Harvard University, but he left after his second year. So he's educated. Okay. I'm just kind of a little confused on if he was born in poverty, how was he able to go to a private school, I'm assuming. His career beginnings in 1990 to 1996. Combs became an intern at New York's Uptown Records in 1990. So he started from the bottom up. While working as a talent director at Uptown and under the guidance and label founder Andrew Harrell, he helped to develop Josie and Mary J. Blige. I don't even know if I said that person's name right, but I apologize. In his college days, Combs had a reputation for throwing parties, some of which attracted up to thousands of patrons. Usher, who lived with Combs for a year in New York City with his 13-year-old, told Howard Stern in 2016 that Combs' lifestyle was pretty wild during that time. In 1991, Combs promoted an AIDS fundraiser with Harry D., I'm sorry, Heavy D. I said Harry D. Heavy D held at the City College of New York. Uh, the gymnast following a charity basketball game. The event was oversold and stampeded occurred in which nine people died. What? This happened in... In 91? At City College of New York... At the gymnasium, following a charity basketball game, the event was oversold. A stampede occurred in which nine people died. My God. See, I, I don't know none of this stuff. Let's see. So, good Lord. Was anybody charged? And they were overpacked. Somebody should have been charged with something, some kind of violation. Shortly after being fired from Uptown in 1993, Combs established his own label, Bad Boy Records, which entered a joint venture with Astelia Records. Combs brought Uptown uh, signing Christopher Wallace, better known as Notorious Big, along with him to the newly established label. Both Wallace and Greg Mack began recording for their label and yielded mainstream recognition, leading to the former's debut album and the label's first major project ready to die 1994 Combs signed more acts to bad boy including carl thomas faith evans 112 total uh, i guess that's separate 112 and total i don't know any of this stuff father mc the hitman his house production team worked with um, Josie, Josie and Mary J. Blige, Usher, Little Kim, TLC, Mariah Carey, Boys to Men, SWV, Aretha Franklin, and others. Wow. Now, I know a couple of those names. I know I'm familiar with Mariah Carey. Aretha Franklin. I've heard of Usher and Little Kim, but I, I don't know any of their music. <laughs> Mass and the Locks joined Bad Boys just as a widely publicized rivalry between the East Coast and West Coast hip hop scenes was beginning. Combs and Wallace were criticized and parodied by Death Row Records cohorts, cohorts, Tupac. Shakur and Serge Knight in songs and interviews during the mid-90s. During 19, 1994 and 1995, Combs produced several songs for TLC's Crazy Sexy Cool, which finished the decade as number 25 on Billboard's list of top pop albums of the decade. Okay. 
Well, I wanted to hear some more details about that uh, stampede, uh, if he was, who was uh, charged in that. In 1996, under the name Puff Daddy, Combs released his first commercial vocal work as a rapper. His debut single, Can't Nobody Hold Me Down, spent 28 weeks on the Hot Billboard Hot 100 chart, peaking at number one. His debut album, No Way Out, was released on July 2022, 1997, through Bad Boys Records. Originally titled Hell, Hell Up in Harlem, the album underwent several changes after the notorious Biggie was killed. On March 9th, 1997, several of the label's artists made guest appearances on the album. No Way Out was a significant success, particularly in the United States, where it reached number one on the Billboard 200 and its first of release selling 560, 567,000 copies. So... Nobody can hold me down and no way out. Is this uh, irony? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The album produced five singles. I'll Be Missing You, a tribute to the notorious Biggie, Big, was the first rap song to debut at number one on the Billboard Hot 100. It remained at the top of the chart for 11 consecutive weeks and topped several other charts worldwide. For other singles, Can't Nobody Hold Me Down, It's All About the Benjamins, I guess that's money, Been Around the World, and Victory were also released. Combs collaborated, collaborated blah, with Jimmy Page on a song, Come, Come With Me, for the 1998 film Godzilla. Really? I did not know that. I always uh, admired Jimmy Page's guitar playing. The album earned Combs five nominations at the 40th Grammy Awards in 1998 and would go on to win the Grammy Award for Best Rap Album. On September 7, 2000, the album was certified uh, platinum by the Recording Industry Association of America for sales of over 7 million copies. By the late 1990s, he was being criticized for watering down and over-commercializing hip-hop for relying exclusively on guest appearances, samples, and interpopulations of past hits. <laughs> well, isn't that special? For example, in 1997 review of No Way Out for Billboard, Havoc Nielsen commented, the over-reliance on huge swaths of undiluted samples is simply clumsy, lazy, and demeaning to the sources. Also in 97, Neil Strauss of the New York Times called Combs the king of sample hits. <laughs> Weren't they all doing that, though? <clears throat> I know they I, I'm familiar with some rap, okay? I'm not all hip to what's down, but the thing is, they were all doing it. They sample other people's stuff. I mean, it was that's. I don't think that's anything new. It's kind of like the lip syncing thing with Millie Vanilli. They were all doing it until they got busted. And then everybody's like, "Oh, you know," and and they all use auto tune. It, they're all a bunch of hypocrites. I mean, seriously, seriously. In April 1999, Combs was charged with assaulting Steve Staltz of Interscope Records. Stout, I guess that's how you say his name, was the manager for Ness, who whom Combs had filmed a, a video earlier that year for the song Hate Me Now. Combs was concerned that the video, which featured a shot of Ness and Combs being crucified, was blasphemous. Well, and you didn't think that why you were filming it, my guy? He asked for his scenes on the cross to be pulled, but after the video aired, Unedited on MTV on April 15th, Combs visited Stouts' office and injured Strauss. <laughs> well, <coughs> if you walked into a studio and they're like, hey, right, you're a musician, even if you're not a musician, you're an extra. And they're like, get up on the cross because we're going to crucify you in this video. You'd be like, no, I'm not doing that. But he did it, and now he's pissed that it got, I don't know, I'm just, you know. In my opinion. You would be like, no, I'm not doing that. Forever, Combs' second solo album, 
was released by Bad Boy Records on August 24, 1999 in North America and the UK on the following day. It reached number two on the Billboard 200 and number one on the top R&B hip-hop albums chart. Before being ousted the following week by Mary J. Blige's fourth album, Mary, uh, Mary, the album received positive to mixed reviews from music critics and spawned three singles that have charted on the Billboard charts. It peaked at number four on the Canadian albums chart, Combs' highest charting album in that country. So, let's see. So, 2001 to 2004. Man, this is this is a lot. P. Diddy and the saga continues. I mean, so far, he's, <laughs> he's had a little bit of turmoil. I mean, the stampede, some people were killed. He goes and assaults some guy, so he's showing a pattern here of uh, some issues. Combs charged his stage, changed his stage name from Puff Daddy to P. Diddy in 2001. The gospel album Thank You, which had been completed just before the beginning of the weapons trial, was due to be released in March that year, but remains unreleased as of 2023. He appeared as a drug dealer in the film M Made and starred with Halle Berry, Heath Ledger, and Billy Bob Thornton in Monster's Ball. I didn't know he was in that. I didn't know he was in Monster Ball. Huh. C Combs began working with a series of um, artists for a short period of time. He was the manager of Kalis, K-E-L-I-S, Kalis. They have a collaboration titled Let's Get It 3. He was an opening act for NSYNC on the spring of 2002 Celebrity Tour. Wow. Well, I think he's a lot bigger than NSYNC now. I mean, and he signed California-based pop girl group Dream to his record label. Combs was a producer of the soundtrack album for the film Training Day. Wow. I did not know that either. <coughs> wow. In June 2001, Combs ended Bad Boy's distribution deal with Argus Records, gaining full control of the label, its catalog, and its roster of artists. The saga continues. Released on January 10th in North America was the, the last studio album released by the joint venture. The album reached number two on the Billboard 200 and the top R&B hip-hop album charts and was eventually certified platinum. It is, it is also the only studio album under the P. Diddy name and the first album by Sean Combs not to feature any guest appearance by Jay-Z, Lil Wayne. Combs was executive producer of the reality TV show Making the Band, which appeared on MTV in 2002 through 2009. So he, he cut out the, the sampling and having people come on. Come on with him. That's what it looks like. The show involves interviewing candidates and creating musical acts that would then enter the music business. Acts who got their start this way included the band, DDD Kane, Day 26, and Dinah Klang. In 2003, Combs ran in the New York City Marathon, raising $2 million for the educational system of New York. <laughs> yeah, a lot of good that did. On March 10, 2004, he appeared on the Oprah Winfrey Show to discuss the marathon, which he finished in four hours and 18 minutes. In 2004, Combs headed the campaign Vote or Die for the 2004 presidential election. On February 1, 2004, Combs performed at the Super Bowl. All right, 2004 Super Bowl. 2005 through 2009. On August 16, 2005, Combs announced on Today that he was altering his stage name yet again. He would be calling himself Diddy. Combs said fans did not know how to address him, which led to confusion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, man. Allegedly known as. Man. It's the whole Prince thing all over again. 
Combs starred in the 2005 film Kalido's Way, Rise to Power. He played Walter Lee Younger in the 2004 Broadway revival of A Risen in the Sun. R sorry, Rising in the Sun. And the television adaptation that aired on February 2008. In 2005, Combs sold half of his record company to the Warner Brothers Music. He hosted the 2005 MTV Music Awards and was named one of the 100 most influential people of 2005. Can you believe it? By Time Magazine. He was mentioned in the country song, Play Something Country, by Brooks and Dunn. The lyricist said he didn't come to hear P. Diddy, which is rhyme with something thumping from the city. I don't even understand that. <laughs> In 2006, when Combs refused to release rapper Mass from his contractable obligations with Bad Boy to allow him to join the group G Unit, 50 Cent recorded a diss song, <laughs> Hip Hop. The lyrics imply that Combs knew the identity of the notorious Biggs murderer. Oh, snap. And two resolved the feud, but it resurfaced in later years. Okay. Do y'all think they just did this stuff to just get publicity, or is there some lividity to all of this violence? Probably, yes. There is something to it. Combs released his first album in four years, Press Play, on October 7, 2006, on the Bad Boy Records label. The album featuring guest appearances by many popular artists debut at number one on the U.S. Billboard 200 charts. With sales over 173,000, its singles came to me, and last night both reached the top ten of the Billboard Hot 100. The album became available to preview on MTV's The League on October 10th. 2006, a week before being sold in stores. Press Play received mixed to positive reviews from critics and was certified gold on the RIAA ratings, whatever that is. On September 18, 2007, Combs teamed up with 50 Cent and Jay-Z for the Forbes I Get Money Billion Dollar Remix. In June 2008, Combs representative denied rumors of other name changes. Combs ventured into reality television in August 2008 with the premiere of his VH1 series, I Want to Work for Diddy. <laughs> he appeared credited under his real name in two episodes of season seven of CSI Miami, presumed guilty and sink or swim in the role of a lawyer, Derek Paul. Man, I, I didn't even know he had he had acting skills. 2010 to 2013. Combs created a rap supergroup in 2010 known as the Dream Team. The group consisted of Combs, Rick Ross, DJ Khaled, Fat Joe, Busta Rhymes, Red Calf, and Fabulous. Combs made an appearance at comedian Chris Gillett's live show in January 2010 at the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater in New York City. In June 2010, Combs played a role created as Sean Combs in the comedy film Get Him to the Greek, as Sergio Roma, a record company executive. An Entourage series represented announced that Combs would guest star on an episode during the 2010 season. Recruiting singers Don Richard and Kaylin Harper, Combs formed the female duo Diddy, Dirty Money, in 2009, the trio's first and only album, Last Train to Paris, was released by Interscope Records on December 13, 2010. The release was produced by four singers, Angels, Hollow, four singles, my bad, Angels, Hello, Good Morning, Loving You No More, and Coming Home. Each saw mixed success on the Billboard Hot 100, although the latter 
peaked at number 11 on the U.S. Hot 100. Number 4 in the U.K. and number 7 in Canada. Those weren't too shabby numbers. Combs produced the group and often performed with them on March 10, 2011. Diddy and Dirty Money performed Coming Home Live on American Idol. On April 18, 2011, Combs appeared in Season 1 of Hawaii Five-0, guest starring as an undercover New York City police detective. In November 2012, Combs appeared in an episode of the eighth season of the American sitcom It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which I have never seen that. On February 26, Combs premiered Big Home featuring Rick Ross, French Montana, as the singer, as... <laughs> That's the single from his mixtape, MMM, Money Making Mitch, which was originally scheduled to be released last year. The song was released for digitally download on March 24th. And two days later, the trailer for the music video was released. The full version of the music video was released on March 31st. Combs used his former stage name Puff Daddy for, his, for the album. MMMM was released as a free mixtape album of 12 tracks on November 4, 2015. In July 2014, Combs and Israeli record producer Guy Gilbert released the compilation album Free Download, 1111 as three free download. On June 29, 2015, Combs released the single Fanna Get Loose. <laughs> which featured vocals and produced by Pharaoh Williams. I mean, this goes on and on. I'm going to put the link in the description. Um, give me one sec. I've seen two, two stats. In 2023, he was a billionaire. A billionaire with a B. Because when I was seeing all these videos of him able to pay for people, to, like he'd have these parties, and, he, and these videos were talking about he's furnishing his guests with, with luxury vehicles, hotel rooms, food. And if he has a couple thousand people or ever how many people he has, even if it's a couple of hundred, that is a tremendous amount of money. But as of, and then I've got another thing, as of uh, now, he's worth $400 million, so I don't know what's going on with that. But he was a billionaire. Now, whether he has still have all these assets, I'm sure he does. Um, I'm just going to throw this in there. So... Hit the allegations against P. Diddy, he he blackmails his victims. They they film them doing these acts. He's drugging them. He's doing these acts to them. He's bribing them. He's filming them. Cause it kind of reminds you of Scientology. I'm gonna call it the cult of P. Diddy. I mean, this isn't funny, but. The cult of P. Diddy, he's running an occult, a, a scam. Because you got Scientology, and what do they do? What does Scientology do? You, they lure you in. They get you recording stuff. Like, it's so bizarre. Like, you're supposed to record your deepest thoughts or your sins or whatever, right? And then they hold it against you. And if you leave... What do they do? They hound you down. They harass you. They do all kinds of stuff. So, just a little comparison between P. Diddy and Scientology. They're both corrupt, in my opinion. But if these allegations are true, he's in big, big trouble, people. He is in big, big trouble. It's all about the love. The love. And I will put this article in the the description. But let's get the present day. We went over a lot of his, uh, I read a lot of his background and how he got to where he is and how he made his money. And then in 2023, he was uh, a billionaire. Now that other stat could be wrong. I saw in 20, 
24. But who cares? He's got money. And I think the he is going to spend much of it on his attorneys. A lot on his attorneys. And how many can he pay off? How many can he settle? There was over 3,000 people with allegations. Now, I know the... The authorities have to go through each one and vet vet them all, right? Vet them all, but the ones he had already settled with must have something that they would settle. Love and the Love Album Off the Grid. On November 5th, 2017, Combe announced that he would be going by the name Love. <laughs> this guy. Stating, my new name is Love, a.k.a. Brother Love. Two days later, he told the press he had been joking, but on January 3rd, 2018, he announced on Jimmy Kimmel that he had changed his name, uh, changed his mind again and will be using the new name after all. The change became official in 2022. <laughs> Man, are you serious? This guy, I guess, when... When people get so wealthy, they just don't know what else to do. I, I I don't know. Just keep changing your name. How many times has he done it? Man, my goodness. In 2019, Combs announced on Twitter that making the band would return to MTV in 2020. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it failed to do so, and it was delayed once more for a release in 2021 before its complete cancellation. Combs executive producer, Nigerian singer Bruno Boy's album, Twice as Tall, which was released on August 14th, 2020. Combs hosted the 2022 Billboard Music Awards. In May of that year, he announced the startup of a new record label, Love Records, as part of a recording contract with Motown, along with Combs himself. The label's artist was singer Jazzy, J-O-Z-Z-Y, who signed to the label that same month. The following June, he released the single, Gotta Move On, which features singer Bryson Tiller and marked his first entry at number 79 on Billboard Hot 100 since coming home. It was promoted as the lead singer for the album. Although it was only... Included on, on its expanded edition on August 22nd, 2023, Combs released a teaser trailer on social media for his fifth studio album, The Love Album, Off the Grid, which was released on September 15th, 2023. I mean, was this guy ever off the grid? He's filming all of this, this stuff, allegations. Well, they, they have to have the stuff. He's been indicted. He is sitting in jail. He is not getting out no time soon. So they've got something, and they've got thousands of terabytes, whatever, of this stuff. And why would he film this? I guess to hold over these people. Coinciding with its release was the lead singer, Another One of Me, a lead single, my bad, with the weekend French Montana and 21 Savage, the song peaked at number 87 on the Billboard Hot 100. While the album peaked at number 19 on the Billboard 200, critical responses to both the song and the album were mixed to average. Despite Combs's signing with Motown, the album released was independently. Uh, with the label's name only present on the promotional materials during an interview with Billboard, Combs had stated, and this is his statement, I'm in a season of total independence. I had an experience with Motown where it was like I've come too far to ask somebody that isn't where I am from about culture and artistic things. If I'm going to be beat on anybody, I'm going to be beat on the people I believe in. <laughs> So I decided to go independent with Love Records and Bad Boy. I decided to come back into the game with bolder ideas and ownership and distribution and future manufacturing because those are the things that we as people are cut out of. 
Okay. The Love Album Off the Grid received a nomination for Best Progressive R&B Album at the 66th Annual Grammy Awards, which commenced on February 4, 2014. Combs did not attend the ceremony due to sexual misconduct allegations levied against him. Levied. That he has stayed revelant, revelant, ah, <laughs> revelant in the music industry. It's usually they they just start dying out the older they get, right? You know, they start just dying out. Let's see. Well, we know about his clothing line. Let's get to some of his personal information, if we can. Family and relationships. This guy, this guy has had it all, hasn't he? He has been blessed with a career, a, become a billionaire, but I guess it just wasn't enough. You have to do disgusting things and control people. I guess power corrupts. Combs is a father to seven children. That is frightening. His first biological child, a son, was born in 1993 to fashion designer and stylist M Missa Hilton. He attended UCLA on a football scholarship and graduated in 2016. Combs had an on and off again relationship with Kimberly Porter, which I, apparently she has passed away. It has 1970 to 19 or to 2018. My bad. Which lasted from 94 to 07. He raised and adopted Quincy, born in 91, Porter's son from a previous relationship with singer producer and Combs rival AIB Sure. T together they had had a son born in 98 and twin daughters born in 06. Porter died of pneumonia on November 15, 2018. Oh my goodness. That is terrible. Five months before the birth of his twins, Combs had a daughter born to Sarah Chapman, who took legal responsibility for her in October 07. <clears throat> Combs was in an 11-year relationship with Cassie Ventura from 07 to 2018. Combs' seventh child was born on October 15, 2022, a daughter. His mother is Dana Train. In November 2022, Combs and his second eldest son became the first father and son duo to have simultaneous hit number ones. Combs reached the top of the Billboard adult R&B airplay chart with a gotta move on, while his son, under his stage name King Combs, topped Media Base's U.S. urban radio chart with Can't Stop, Won't Stop featuring Kodak Black. Cohn owns homes in Alpine, New Jersey, which he purchased for seven million in 1990. This is his religious views, if he has any. Okay, Combs was raised Catholic and was an altar server, at, and he <laughs> and he served as an altar boy. In 08, he told the the Daily Telegram that he does not adhere to any specific religious denominations. He said, I just follow right from wrong. So I could pray in a synagogue or a mosque or a church. I believe that that is where is only, that he believes that there's only one God. Guys, if these allegations are true, which it's looking like, they, they could be. They they denied this man bail from all of these allegations. They denied him bail. But yet, he does adhere to any specific religious denominations. But he does believe that there's one God. Which God is that, my guy? In a 2023 interview, Combs said he believes that God is a woman. Well, there you go. There you go. Charity work and honors. Combs founded Diddy's House Social Programs. 
Damn, that gives that a whole new meaning. An organization to help inner city youth in 1995. Programs include tutoring, life skills classes, and annual summer camp. Along with JC, he pledged $1 million to help support victims of Hurricane Katrina in 2005 and donated clothing from his Sean John line to victims. He has donated computers and books to New York schools. In 98, he received a Golden Platt plaque award for the american academy of achievement chicago mayor richard m daly named october 13th 06 as diddy day you think they're going to take that back <laughs> in honor of combs charity work in 08 combs was honored with a star on the hollywood walk of fame the first male rapper to be so honored why are they honoring him on the walk of fame Hmm. Okay, and that's happened in 08. In 2014, Combs received an honorary doctorate in humanities from Harvard University, where he gave the commemorate speech for its 146th commemorate ceremony. In his speech, Combs acknowledged that his experience as a Harvard student positively influenced his life. In 2016, Combs donated $1 million to Harvard University to establish the Sean Combs Scholarship Fund to help students who are unable to pay for their tuition. In 2022, Combs announced during his uh, BET Lifetime Achievement Award acceptance speech that he will donate $1 million each to Howard University and Jackson State University. Well, Okay. The guy went to Harvard. He's 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 uh <coughs> he's educated. But yet he's accused of some the most heinous things a person could be accused of. These victims of his coming out is horrifying. Horrifying. But I guess what? You could still be intelligent and do these horrific things. Yes, look at Ted Bundy. In 1997, Combs was sued for... Oh, now, we're going over his legal issues. In 1997, Combs was sued for landlord neglect by Ingor Bungo. Combs denied the charges on April 15, 1999, shortly after the music video for NAS, Hate Me Now, aired on MTV featuring Combs being crucified, he and two others burst into NASA's former manager, Steve Stout's office, and attacked him. Stout sued Combs in, January, in June of 1999, resulting in Combs paying him an out-of-court settlement of a half a mil. Originally charged with the assault for the event, Combs pled guilty on September 8, 1999 to a charge of harassment and was sentenced to spend one day in an anger management class. On December 27, 1999, Combs, his then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez, and his protege rapper Shane, Sean, Shine, <laughs> were at a club in New York, Times Square, in Manhattan. When gunfire broke out, a prosecutor said that the incident was sparked by an, an argument at the club between Combs and another patriot. After a police investigation, Combs and Shane were arrested for weapons violation and other charges. Combs was charged with four weapons-related charges and with bribing his driver, Walden Ferguson, to claim ownership of his gun. With a gag order in place, the highly publicized trial began. Combs' attorneys were Johnny L. Cochran Jr. <coughs> Excuse me, and Benjamin Baffman. Combs was found not guilty on all charges. Sean was con convicted on five of his eight charges and sentenced to ten years in prison. Combs and Lopez broke up shortly after. A lawsuit filed by Ferguson, who said he suffered emotional damage after the shooting, was settled in February 2004. Lawyers for both sides, having agreed to keep the settlement term secret, said the matter had been resolved to the satisfaction of all parties. In 2001, he was arrested for driving with a suspended license in Florida. So apparently the shooting 
Was that the shooting where somebody was shot in the bathroom? And then they said it was a drive-by. It could be the, a different incident. But then again, how could you shoot somebody in a bathroom? There was no windows. Anyway, just pointing that out. In 2003, the National Labor Committee revealed that uh, factories producing the Sean John clothing brand in Honduras were violating Honduran labor laws. Well, if he was such an American patriot, which I think he never claimed he was, why didn't he have that stuff produced here and create jobs? Among the accusations were that workers were subjected to body searches and involuntary pregnancy tests. Damn. I understand the body searches. Hell, I think um, Amazon does that. you got to go through a scanner coming out because you could steal stuff. But pregnancy tests? What the hell? <coughs> Bathrooms were locked and access tightly controlled. Employees were forced to work overtime and were paid sweatshop wages. Charles King, King, Kingergan of the National Labor Committee told the New York Times that Sean Puff Daddy obviously has a lot of clout. He can literally do a lot overnight to help these workers. Combs responded with an extensive investigation telling reporters, I am as I am as pro-worker as they get. In February 2004, Kerrigan, I guess that's how you say his name, announced that improvements had been implemented at the factory, including adding air conditioning and water purification systems. Damn, they didn't have that. Firing the most abusive supervisors and allowing the formation of a labor union. Also in 2003, Kirk Burroughs sued Combs, claiming that he had forced him to give up his shares of Bad Boy Records through threats of violation. In 2006, the case was dismissed because the statute of limitations had expired. In 2005, an assault charge against Combs filed by Michigan television host Ragila Mills was resolved in Combs' favor. Later in 2005, London-based musical artist and DJ Richard Dearlove, who had been performing under the name Diddy since 92, nine years before Combs started using even P. Diddy, sought an injunction in the High Court of Justice in London. He accepted it, an out-of-court settlement of... I don't... This, this number, it says 10,000, but it's in an other country's... Um, numeral money and damages are more than a hundred thousand in cost combs no longer uses the name diddy in the uk where he is still known as p diddy so i'm not sure how much money that was i mean it's uh i apologize i don't always know other countries currency but anyway here we go and oh they settled that's all we need to know is that guy took the money and ran in 07 gerard Recusenter sued Combs for battery after claiming Combs had punched him outside a Hollywood nightclub. Rechinesd? Rich, Rechesner? Rechesner, maybe that's how you say his name. Claimed he was attacked after he approached Combs while the rap mogul was talking to his girlfriend. Combs settled the lawsuit for undisclosed terms in March 08. Well, I tell you what, money can make a lot of stuff go away, people. Because almost every one of these he has settled. So, or, or it has just, just gone in his favor. In 09, the Los Angeles Times claimed that Notorious Big and Combs orchestrated the 1994 robbery and shooting of Tupac. Uh they substantiated the claim with supposed FBI documents. The newspaper later retracted the story, acknowledging that the documents had been fabricated. In 2012, Dexter Isaac, an associate of record management executive Jimmy Henchman, confessed that he had shot Tupac on Henchman's orders. In 2015, Combs was arrested for aggravated assault after altercation with his son's football coach at a University of California, Los Angeles. On July 2nd, 2015, the assault charges were dropped due to lack of evidence. Man, this guy.
In 2021, Combs filed a $60 million lawsuit against the new owners of Sean John, claiming the firm used his likeness without permission and fabricated quotes endorsing their new product line. In 2023, Combs filed a, a racial discrimination lawsuit against Diego, claiming that the Spirits Company deliberately kneecapped the marketing and sales of his Ciroc Vodka and Delon Tequila labels. In January 2024, Combs voluntarily withdrew the lawsuit with prejudice and also served the business relation severed severed the business relationship on march 4th 2024 music producer rodney little rod jones who was already suing combs for sexual assault filed a lawsuit against combs and his son justin allegedly they engaged in a massive cover-up of their involvement in the shooting of a 30-year-old man at a writer's and producer's camp that has held at Combs Charles Recording Studio in Los Angeles in September of 2022. On March 25th, 2024, former Syracuse University basketball player and Combs associate Brandon Paul was arrested at the Op Op Laka Airport in Miami Dade County, Florida, on two charges of cocaine and controlled substance possessions. He was released the next day after po posting a $2,500 bail. Little Rod has accused Paul of being Combs' drug mule in court documents. <laughs> Man. Sexual misconduct allegations and lawsuits. I mean, this guy has been, it's a good thing he's a billionaire because this has just been nothing but crazy, 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 craziness. And I guess you would have to have a lot of money or a lot of intimidation to keep over 3,000 people quiet. If he was assaulting these people from, what'd they say, over a decade? That's insane. It's just insane. In May 2017, Sidney Roda, who previously served as Combs' personal chef, filed a lawsuit against Combs in the Los Angeles County Superior Court, claiming, among other things, sexual harassment and retaliation. The lawsuit was settled for an undisclosed amount in February of 2019. We're seeing a pattern here. Just settle, 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 or he's getting out of it, he's getting out of it. Casey Ventura, with whom Combs had a long-term relationship, filed a lawsuit against him on November 16, 2023, accusing him of rape, sex trafficking, and physical abuse. The lawsuit also suggests that Combs was responsible for blowing up Ventura's then-boyfriend, Kid Cooties. I said Cooties. Oh, C-U-D-I-S? Cuddies? Car says he blew up his car. Combs and Ventura reached an undisclosed settlement the following day, and the lawsuit was dismissed. Here we go. <coughs> On May 17, 2024, CNN released surveillance footage of Combs physically assaulting Ventura at the Intercontinental Hotel in Central City, Los Angeles, on March 5, 2016. Wow. This incident was among the allegations made in the lawsuit. Only on May 19, 2024, Combs issued a video apology on Instagram and Facebook stating he was truly sorry and that his actions were inexcusable. Combs' assaulted, assault of Ventura was stopped by hotel staff, after which Combs allegedly tried to bribe the staff, according to a federal indictment. In September 2024, two further lawsuits were filed against Combs by two additional complaints, allegedly sexual assault and revenge porn on November 23, 
Yeah, November 23, 2023. That's a tongue twister there. One of the lawsuits claimed that in 1990 or 91, he and Aaron Hall had sexual abuse. Sexually abused a woman with combs recording the incident. So he started recording stuff back in the 90s. On October 1st, 2024, the Washington Post reported that a team of lawyers will be filing as many as 120 more lawsuits covering assaults that took place during the 2000s and 2010s. Plaintiffs, 25 of whom are minors, are both male and female. Tony Busby, one of the attorneys on the team, said most of the alleg- the alleged assaults took place in New York State. Half of the alleg- alleged victims say that they reported the assaults to police, to a doctor, or to the FBI. Some claim to have been drugged or or offered hush money, an additional potential defendants other than Combs are also to be named in the lawsuit. The names that we're going to be going to name, assuming our investigations confirm and collaborate what will be what we've been told. Okay. Our names that will shock you, Busby commented at a press conference in Houston. I'm talking here about not just the cowardly but complacent bystanders that is these people that we know watched these behavior occur and did nothing and i'm talking about the people that participated encouraged it egged it on they know who they are andrew van ashdale of the avl law group which is working with bugsby said that they have heard some from some three thousand people with the abuse allegations against Combs and the team is currently actively examining another hundred potential cases. Eric Wolf, a member of Combs legal team, told the BBC that Combs looks forward to proving his innocence vindicating himself in court where the truth will be established based on evidence, not speculation. Wow. This is just incredible. This is just incredible. He's, do y'all remember the movie that Jodie Foster was in? Where I think it was based on a true story where she was um, assaulted in a bar. One guy, I think one or two guys actually assaulted her like on a pinball machine or whatever it was. <coughs> I mean, this movie was back in the 80s, by the way. But the people that were standing around egging it on, they all got charged too. And I think it was one of the first cases in its kind. And I guess it maybe it went on to change the laws that uh, you don't do anything. You thinking, I just keep in my mouth shut. I don't want to be in trouble. I don't want I don't want the revenge from the people doing it. But if they're standing around egging it on and they're doing this and that, then yes, they can be charged with it. And apparently, he has so many people. So many people at these parties. There's no way. Now, I heard somebody say the other day that uh, it's possible that um, they're going to give some of these people immunity to testify against him. That will be a sight to see. So, there you have it. <coughs> Excuse me, my allergies are acting up today. There you have it. That is the low down of the allegations. And apparently, I saw something last night that there's like six more. There's a handful of people that come out. They, they're they going to need the... the uh, the police department, FBI, the uh, law firm, man, they're going to need massive people. I mean, just to sit and review the videos, interview each person, go back in time, find records from the doctors, find all of this stuff. It's going to be, it is a task. So I don't see this going to court anytime soon with this, with this much evidence that they have to gather for discovery well anyway there you have it p diddy counts in his history